my name's Mark Brennan. I'm a partner and portfolio manager uh, at Foresight Group, and I'm the lead manager of the Foresight Sustainable Real Estate Securities Fund, which is the fund that um, I'm going to be uh, talking to you all about for the next sort of 25 um, minutes. Uh, and we'll include some time um, for, for questions to ask on the way through. And I hope there'll be some, some interesting questions on what is a, uh, a very interesting sector um, uh, in terms of where we sit in the cycle um, and the journey that many investors have been on uh, with, with real estate. And I'm sure we've all got you know, individual stories and experiences of, 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 of how real estate has, has performed over, over long periods of time, but particularly in, in recent history. Um, so just in terms of uh, sort of direction of travel for the next sort of uh, 15 minutes, um, uh, I'll give a little bit of an introduction to uh, Foresight Group. Um, many of you may not know us, many of you may know us, uh, and then I'll talk about uh, our fund, uh, a bit of context on, on performance that we see, uh, and then a bit of a deep dive into, into the actual sector positioning strategy um, and how we see the overall real estate sector uh, our outlook and, and a couple of individual companies, which I hope will bring to light some of what's distinctive about this strategy and about how we approach um, uh, the real estate market. Um, so if I if I maybe just make a quick start um, uh, just by uh, introducing Foresight Group. Um, so we are a London headquartered uh, and London listed uh, uh, private equity uh, infrastructure and uh, real assets manager. Uh, we've been in business for 39 years um, and we have three main areas of focus. We have a private equity business. Any of you who uh, make EIS or VCT investments might be aware of us from, from, from there. We have a, a private infrastructure business, uh, which is probably our largest division in terms of assets under management. Uh, and then we have a public markets team, which is my team, Foresight Capital Management, where we run um, mainly UK USITS funds investing across listed real assets and sustainable equities. And we uh, have about 1.3 billion under management within that team. And this sustainable real estate strategy fits within that part of uh, the division. Uh, we're a global business. We have offices in the UK, Europe uh, and Australia. And having been privately held for a long time, uh, we uh, IPO'd in 2021 and we are shortly uh, to be included in the FTSE 250, which is another exciting development for us uh, as, a, as a business. So that's who we are as, uh, as Foresight Group. Um, I'm, I'm a partner alongside Nick Scullin, who's the other partner within our team. And we have a team of 12 looking after the Foresight Capital Management Division, where this real estate fund um, sits. So what is the fund? Let me sort of briefly introduce the strategy itself. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little about what it's not as well, just to help um, put, put it into context. So uh, the Foresight Sustainable Real Estate Securities Fund is a, a UK open-ended fund, uh, but we are only investing into listed real estate investment trusts. So unlike many open-ended funds, which you may have had exposure to uh, in, in history, we are not investing directly into real estate. We're investing into listed real estate investment trusts. Um, and that's a, a, a property shares type type strategy, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, as the name suggests, we are focused on uh, integrating sustainability into our investment process and the portfolio. I'll talk a bit about what that actually means. Um, and we run a, a very uh, active benchmark agnostic portfolio in terms of the sectors that we invest into um, and we invest globally. Um, so uh, we have a uh, uh, exposure to UK, US, Canada, Japan, Australia, other markets, um, and again, focused as a long only investor with a concentrated portfolio uh, of around 30 holdings uh, at the moment. And the fund is a little over three years old. So we launched it um, in June 2020. Um, from an investment objective perspective, we're targeting both um, income and capital growth over a rolling five year period. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about, about performance and, and outlook uh, a little later on. But I think key thing to emphasize is that this is not a bricks and mortar property fund. This is a open-ended fund investing only into listed real estate investment trusts um, uh, in global uh, stock exchanges. So 
you know, clues in the name in the sense that sustainability is clearly something that, that's important within this strategy. Um, it's not a, a focus that um, many real estate strategies uh, have. You know, most of what you know we observe within, uh, I guess, the sustainability and ESG uh, agenda is focused on more traditional asset classes. Um, but our conviction behind this fund is that sustainability absolutely matters um, when it comes to driving long-term returns within real estate. Um, and it comes down to a few kind of key areas. It comes down to capital access. You know, real estate investment trusts are capital thirsty business models. Um, and access to capital is, is increasingly um, favoring um, uh, real estate business models that are sustainable. Um, the other side of that coin is that as you see the regulatory bar rise within the built environment, um, the capital expenditure requirements for real estate owners um, are going up in order to make sure that you know uh, buildings align with certain EPC ratings or whatever it might be in the local uh, geography. And so if you have a portfolio of old unsustainable real estate, your capex expenditures are going to are going to get worse relative to more sustainable peers, um, and then from a from a returns perspective, you know we see um, you know uh, asset value and tenant quality. Uh, we see better asset quality and better better tenant quality in portfolios of sustainable real estate. You know if you are um, Amazon and you want to lease a warehouse for your operations, you know you have your own corporate sustainability objectives you need to deliver on and you need your real estate to support you on that so we want to invest into companies that can attract and retain the very best tenants on the very best terms and it's not just about location and cost it's about sustainability performance you can offer tenants uh, and that's why one of the reasons that we think sustainability matters within um, real estate and that's that's kind of part of the dna behind um, this strategy uh, as well as all the other um, things that, that that you look at naturally as a as a real estate investor, sustainability is a key factor within our within our process. I'll talk a little bit about sort of recent performance. You know, anybody following the sector will know um, that 2022 was a terrible year for uh, real estate, worst year since 2008. Um, you know, you saw uh, you know, the the reaction, the sensitivity to, to to rate moves being very very sharp, and you can see from this performance chart. You know, mini budget September 22 um, was really where things started to um, to get hurt um, as public markets tried to reprice real estate in the context of, of rapidly rising risk-free rates and 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 policy rates uh, you know, in in the UK, US, and other other developed markets. So you know, an absolutely challenging 12 to 18 months for the whole sector, uh, and and the performance within this fund uh, has, has absolutely been been caught in that. Um, but what I want to talk about now is where we see the real estate sector in, in broad terms, but also by sector from a valuation perspective, um, because one of the interesting moments that we see within real estate now is how dislocated valuations are in private markets versus public markets. And the opportunity right now is in public markets from a valuation perspective. And, and I'll talk a little bit about why that is and, and with, with some examples as well. So the valuation outlook is 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 a key consideration uh, at the moment. This this chart seeks to try and show um, how sectors are currently valued um, relative to NAV, so relative to sort of fair value, um, on a mac minimum and maximum range, but also average and current. Um, and so as we're looking at each of those sectors, um, you know, the gold dot there is showing current valuation relative to fair value. And the purple dots are showing average. So in in all cases, real estate sectors are currently trading below average in terms of uh, valuation. Um, and in all cases, but one, real estate sectors are trading below now below fair value. Now, the, the the task for professional investors is to figure out what's what is the fair value, what is the actual value, and where there's uncertainty, clearly public markets will apply a discount to that. Um, but if you look historically, um, this is one of the sort of uh, uh, sharpest disconnects between what we see as fair value and what public markets are telling us is, is, is the share price um, in a very long time. 
And when you combine that with historically how you've seen real estate perform coming out of interest rate tighten, tightening and, you know, touch wood, we're you know, coming towards the end, certainly probably in the US, coming towards the end of uh, the tightening cycle, um, real estate as a sector has historically outperformed equities when you come out of that, that tightening cycle. Um, and this low valuation start point is, is one of the kind of indicators of, of, of that potential um, opportunity. So valuations historically very low and attractive. And I'll talk about some specific examples in terms of how private markets help provide a, a benchmark for that um, a little later on in, in the presentation. But I think key message here is that real estate has been heavily beaten up. Um, uh, individual REITs are trading at, at material discounts to, to NAV. Um, and there's, there's, there's good reason to believe that those NAVs are, are pretty solid now. Uh, and then therefore, you know, the discount is a is a big a big opportunity potentially. Uh, and and that I, I think it, it forms certainly a lot of our um, outlook within the, within the fund. Um, so that's kind of performance and, and valuation, which I think are really important things for the sector generally, and certainly for this fund. Um, in terms of where we're invested, um, this fund looks quite different to a lot of other listed real estate strategies that are out there. Um, uh, but both by where we're overweight, but also by what where we're underweight and what we don't include. So we've always been very much focused on traditionally a more more um, specialist parts of the real estate market. Um, we don't have any retail, for example, which on a market cap sort of index basis would be a high allocation. Um, we're very underweight offices relative to any sort of real estate benchmark. Um, and we're very overweight areas like logistics, forestry, um, and other areas. Um, and our investment process is very much bottom up in terms of trying to identify the most interesting and attractive um, individual real estate companies, but also trying to catch some of the um, larger trends that are driving flows of capital from a sector perspective. And so logistics has always been a key allocation for us. Forestry, which I'll talk about in, with a case study a bit later on, has been a growing allocation for us and an interesting and hard to access asset class in public markets but actually within real estate investment trusts some fantastic companies that that are available and indeed some of the some of the best performance we've had has come from some of those companies but also looking at areas like data centers um, life sciences um, early learning centers so you know sectors where we've got structural growth we've got high occupancy you've got high tenant uh, credit quality um, and you've got attractive kind of balance sheet positioning um, in terms of you know resilience to uh, cost of cost of capital going up. So this is where we're positioned currently from a sector uh, perspective, which, as I say, is is fairly uh, distinctive uh, within the market. Before I talk about a couple of individual companies that are in the portfolio, um, worth just kind of noting a little bit uh, uh, where we are. Um, from a sort of portfolio characteristics perspective. I've said this already, but you know, we focus on high quality real estate with strong sustainability credentials and growth tailwinds. Uh, the fund itself is currently just under 100 million sterling with about 31 holdings. Whilst I said we invest into, you know, um, more specialist real estate sectors, these are by no means small companies. So the weighted average market cap of the portfolio is about 10 billion sterling. Um, and again, from a gearing perspective, it clearly REITs uh, uh, have gearing as part of their business model, um, weighted average of about 35%. You compare that to um, how the sector was coming into the GFC in 2008, where gearing was generally over 50%. It's a lot more conservative, um, which has been one of the good lessons implemented post, post GFC. Um, uh, and obviously we interrogate you know, balance sheet strength um, very closely, and it's uh, it's in a much better position than it than it was um, you know, in 2008, for example. And in terms of lease length, weighted average lease length of about six years, and expected net yield of about four and a half percent within the portfolio. So, you know, I guess you know, in terms of how we're thinking about the portfolio and positioning, you know, clearly the markets continue to be concerned about rates. From a financing perspective, we have very little underlying refinancing requirements in the portfolio. So we feel good on that, that front. Um, you know, we, we're, we're focusing on um, some of the derating we've seen in individual names. 
to add them into the portfolio. So companies which historically were, were, were pretty expensive are much more sensible now. And so we've, we've used that as a buying opportunity in the portfolio. We continue to focus on tenant quality uh, and we continue to, to focus on sectors with, with structural tailwinds, ones I've already alluded to, like logistics and healthcare, data centers uh, and forestry. So that's kind of some of our focus from a positioning perspective. Um, before we turn it over to questions, I just wanted to talk about a couple of companies at a high level, just to bring it to life a little bit. Um, so one of one of the uh, uh, data center REITs we have in the portfolio is, is Digital Realty, which is a, a large US listed data center real estate investment trust. Um, so it has a you know very large portfolio, 300 sites, you know across uh, a global footprint, and it's in the business of leasing space within within data centers for. Um, for, for, for companies to come and you know put their hardware in you know ai cloud computing these are all driving um uh you know resilient demand for physical space for servers um, and all of that flows through to a real estate opportunity which companies like dlr are able to capture and their strong focus on sustainability and how they operate um their sites again is putting them you know towards the front of the pack um from a from a competitive um perspective um, and in terms of some of the some of the uh, financials, um, uh, you know, uh, from a valuation perspective, DLR trades probably 25%, 30% discount to some of the private transactions that we've seen in the market. So Blackstone and others have, have bought private portfolios of, of, of data centers at sort of 26, 27, 28 times earnings. Um, DLR is trading, you know, close to 20. So there's a, there's a real sort of opportunity there valuation wise which which we've seen proven by some of the some of the private market deals that have taken place um and so we're very excited about having having dlr in the portfolio uh, and then one final example again a, a relatively unusual company probably in uk portfolios um which is a us listed um forestry REIT called warehouser uh, it's actually the largest landowner in the us after the federal government um and they have uh, portfolios of, of, of forestry um, around the US uh, and they sell logs and, and wood products um, uh, to, to a range of different different customers um, but interestingly um, you know they they are continuing to see opportunity in what they call natural climate solutions so carbon credits using the land to lease uh, for renewable energy um, and fundamentally um, from, from a from a timber perspective you know they are um, uh, benefiting for the, from the structural underbuilding of housing in the US that has been in place since 2008 and the increasing use of, of timber within not just private homes, but increasingly commercial properties uh, as well, given the benefits of embedded carbon and so on. So a, a very strong dividend growth story, very strong EBITDA growth story, um, and, a, and a very strong sustainability story. Um, and it's been one of our sort of best performing companies um, within the portfolio. So a bit of a whistle-stop tour there. I think we'll turn over to questions um, just in a moment, but but hopefully that gives you a, a good overview of how we approach the real estate market, where we see the opportunity currently within within the global real estate market, and some of the interesting businesses that that, that we have in the portfolio and some of the tailwinds that we're excited to to to, to be involved with from a real estate perspective. Thank you very much indeed for that presentation. Nice nicely done. Okay. okay. Um, someone's picked up on the. Um, underweight office in offices which has been a good yep. decision however now that there is a lot of pressure goldman sachs jp morgan etc the staff to return to offices is it not a good time to increase waiting in the office sector yeah i mean we we have actually been increasing it slightly um we're, i don't think we're ever going to get close to sort of benchmark weight but there's a there's a real bifurcation to be honest in terms of what's happening in the real estate market it's not just driven by return to work it is also driven by sustainability and, and quality and if you look at occupancy demand you know releasing in you know prime class a sustainable office space it's still pretty good and even during the pandemic you had companies like meta taking out big leases in the middle of manhattan when everyone else was kind of running for the hills um mm. and so so there is def there is clearly occupancy pressure in in, in certain markets but um there is still opportunity within life sciences, within um, certain uh, geographies, 
uh, certain, certain metro areas um, where occupancy is still good, demand still good, releasing is still good. Um, so yeah, we have actually been you know, increasing it a little bit. As I say, we're, we're unlikely to ever get to what you might think is a benchmark weight, um, but there, there's definitely pockets of opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you anticipate will be the impact of high interest rates on the business? Uh, so on the fund, I think we've, we've we've really we've really lived the consequences of that over the last 12 to 18 months, where mm. um, uh, you know, asset values have been impacted to an extent, um, and people have been worried about um, you know, the cost of finance. Uh, they've been worried about the impact of risk-free rates on 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 valuations. So if you look at how public REITs have traded over the last 18 months. Um, yeah, that, that's really that. That's the evidence of the impact in terms of in terms of rate moves. Um, the key within real estate in a market like this, where rates are higher, is real estate businesses who can deliver genuine earnings growth. Um, mm -hmm. You know, where in a world where rates are five percent, you know, just clipping a coupon is not really going to do it. Why would you take equity risk for that? So. So I think you know we're really focused on 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 the earnings growth potential um, that we see within our companies, um, so that the returns we can deliver to our investors are are compelling in in a high rate environment. Okay, what would you expect a typical holding period for the investment to be? So our turnover is very low. Um, you know we're generally investing into real estate businesses. On a long-term thesis, rather than any sort of short-term sort of valuation opportunity, um, and so you know we we would we would hope to hold hold companies you know for three five years plus. Um, and as I say, the majority of the uh, companies that have been in the portfolio have been in in there since inception. Um, obviously, valuations have provided some opportunities to add some things. We have made a few disposals, driven by companies whose business models were less suitable in a higher rate environment. Um, but turnover overall is pretty low. Thank you. Um, how does the fund ensure that it has a continued exposure to a variety of different sectors? So um, clearly as a, as a use it's fund, so we have a certain amount of sort of built-in diversification requirements in terms of yeah. the underlying holdings. Um, you know, our investment process is focused on providing a broad exposure to what we see as the most attractive uh, real estate sectors uh, worldwide. So if you look at the sector mix of the portfolio um, since inception, um, you'll see that we've steadily increased the number of sectors we have in, in, in the portfolio and the number of holdings. Um, but as I say, we're not, so we're not top down in terms of how we drive that. You know, we're looking for the best opportunities wherever we find them, um, clearly with some sector views uh, overlaid with that um, so from it, it's really driven by our investment process okay uh, which leads me on to um, what advantages will investing within sustainable real estate assets offer investors in the future so I think it goes back to one of the earlier earlier points earlier slides which is which is really around um, sustainability as a driver of financial return which mm -hmm. comes down to both capital costs and also um, quality of, of revenue and quality of tenants. So over time, portfolios of real estate, which are higher performing from a sustainability perspective, which is obviously to do with energy consumption, it's about it's to do with wastewater management, it's to do with impact on local communities, these are all sustainability factors. Um, portfolios of real estate that uh, can outperform on that basis will and do attract and retain better tenants on better lease terms and so the financial performance we believe will be heavily driven by um, sustainability considerations over the long term you, you, you reduce your regulatory risk you reduce your cost of capital you increase the quality of your tenants so we think these are all things that will flow through over the long term to, to, to returns for investors okay so we've got time for one more mark um what do you think sets the FP Foresight Sustainable Fund apart in the field of ESG and sustainability? I think I think the fact that we're focused on real estate is one of the most distinctive things. There are very few strategies out there that are have done the work to try and apply sustainability principles to 
the real estate market to the listed real estate market because it's quite hard to do it um it mm. requires a bespoke process we don't just buy in ratings from someone and 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 back solve a portfolio you know we have an internal team doing all the work ourselves so um i think i think that's one of the most distinctive things is that you know we are bringing you know that we you know we as a house we're sustainability led we've been focused on sustainability for decades and i think mm -hmm. bringing that to bear on on such an important sector um i think is it is, is unique um and I mean, you know, we've received you know awards and recognition for for that innovation um and so i think the way we apply the process the fact that the process is bespoken in house um yep. are all things that i think are distinctive um within the, the world of esg and uh, and sustainability um so that, that's probably my answer okay brilliant okay mark appreciate the presentation and answering all the questions which we'll, we'll threw at you this evening and um we'll say good night now and um obviously forward the deck to the uh, people who've tuned in and um thanks for your time great thanks opportunity appreciate it yeah.